to Rainy Day Let's Play. I'm Solon, and this is the 15th episode of Bioshock. We have just entered the Good Time Club, and assumedly will deal with Fink. Awesome, so we'll just, you know, kill Fink's men, he'll probably send us a few waves out at us, and it'll all be good. <laughs> Random cowboy hat. Unrest is coming to it. Now, Fitzroy has got the jungle all right. Racist. Up. A man like me could have use of an old Pinkerton like you. So there will be violence happening, and you know, nothing new, nothing different. Anyway, crime comes to Shantytown. Finkton worker housing has been plagued by panhandling, vagrancy, destruction of Fink manufacturing property, and worse. Fink blames his head of security. The boss has no patience for failure. End. Okay, so just more reiteration of the same. Anyway, let's get on to something more interesting. I feel like the religious analysis of Bioshock Infinite didn't push enough buttons. So today, we're going to spend two episodes to talk about politics and racism in the United States. Racist. Only man I know who hasn't <laughs> lost a limb working with them. <laughs> right, make the Chinese guy the explosive expert. Over there, firemen! Now, that ain't Fink. That's just straight racist. So, today, uh, like I said, we're gonna spend two episodes talking about politics and racism in the United States. Which is sweet. Since uh, Bioshock Infinite shows a very particular kind of racism that really invisibilizes the modern problems that people of color have in the United States today. So I'm saying that in the way that Bioshock looks at racism, the, the way that they are, Irrational Games is actually doing a disservice to people of color in, in the entirety, and they are, by extent, being racist. Or really being white supremacist, however you want to look at it, call it, there's a lot of labels you can put on it. Great, we killed the bad guys, and... okay, whatever. So, let's start with some history, since American public schools are known for being bad about covering topics of black history, thanks to the megacorporation McGraw-Hill, who made billions on George W. Bush's No Child Left Behind Act. Anyways, since the end of the Civil War in the U.S., black people have been chained down by systematic bigotry in the United States in a wide variety of ways, a, a Capricorn of ways you could say. So we're gonna get another this bad guy here. Is a of Lady Open the box. Alright, we got the fire guy, so now we get the bird guy. And even even the bad guys themselves are not inspired nor creative at this point. <laughs> it's just the same old fight. So, post Civil War, it was uh, it was a very race based bigotry. The the abolition of the institution of slavery ended up shaking up the entire country, and black people were free. But even those who weren't tricked into staying on their plantations had nowhere to go. So if your local town or your state suddenly has a whole bunch of underemployed people who need food and shelter but have none, what do you do? That's where the Jim Crow laws start. Since the, the federal government banned slavery, it was up to state and local governments to set the rules. 
to replace all our security with machines. I'll give the old boy credit, though. It would be fewer mouths to feed. Oh, they were turrets in the boxes the whole time. Also, this hand cannon is amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> the box opened up the wrong way. Unlucky box. Okay, so we got robots everywhere. If you've uh, if you've ever seen the the old Disney movie, oh, what's it called? Um, Song of the South. And uh, that movie is entirely about slavery in post Civil War um, and how you how you work between these things. It's not entirely about them, but it has a um, one of the major subplots of it involves. Uh, post-bellum, which is post-war South. And what it means to basically be a paid servant at that point. Um, and it's a, just a really great movie, but... <sighs> Fink, very confused, apparently. Want to take her offer over mine? Do you know how many people would kill to be head of Fit Security? <laughs> You're a tough nut to crack, Mr. DeWitt. A tough nut. <laughs> but I promise you this I will get what I want. I don't know. If this is supposed to be like similar to that scene in, Bio in Bioshock where you're taken off on a whole nother adventure. This is a really lame copy of it. <laughs> like, just with the the confetti and saying congratulations, you did this this thing when your like your bad guy or enemy says, "Oh, good job!" and confetti falls down. That's exactly the same as in. Um, when you told me what's that, that place called in, in Bioshock One? Music trumpeting from holes in the thin air. I began to doubt your mental integrity, but. Not only have you made your fortune from these two dads, you have lit the path for me as well. Alright, Fink's just gloating in his success. Whatever. Also, Fink's underbelly ground, underground area is gonna be like super shady. Like you'd expect. Okay, so after that, you get the uh, the Jim Crow laws where state and local city governments define who could go where or who can't go where, and these were established after 1904, employing the pejorative expression of Jim Crow. This allowed the, the state government's free reign to control specifically black people, but then also uh, all other people of color, however they wanted, strictly on the color of their skin. They call us in when the workers got restless. To do what? Demonstrate the folly of men striking. Throwing down tools. You hurt people. I'll tell you this. Sometimes there's precious need for folks like Fitzroy. Why? Because of folks like me. Yep. Done. Booker as a as a Pinkerton agent basically breaks is a strike breaker in all of the worst and most violent senses. Where if labors if there's uh, labor unrest happening, that he is sent in basically as like a hardcore FBI agent or a SWAT team person but privately bought by the the companies and corporations to be like nope you guys have to keep working even though it sucks to work here no let's keep an eye out uh so uh basically jim crow laws say you can go here but you cannot go there and you can work and live here but you cannot work and live there the the catch of this is even if the federal government thought that this was immoral which it didn't necessarily think, abolishing state laws makes it a state versus federal government problem, not a human rights problem. And if you don't live in the U.S. and aren't familiar with U.S. politics, having a state rights versus federal rights problem is usually coded to being Republican versus Democrat problem, and is thus the most de divisive situation you can create between people in the U.S. And so, it was the worst of all possible situations for a any kind of moral grounds. Like most uh, political situations involving some sort of morality. Which is a total shame, but that happens. 
So, after that, Civil War. Uh, wait, sorry. Um, okay, so, Civil War. Then you have 50 years of discrimination based disestablishment where everyone's confused and nobody knows what's happening. Um, but now, uh, uh, especially black people, um, but including to more people of color. Uh, they have no idea what's going on or what to do at this point. Then after that you have 60 years of Jim Crow laws, during which times outsprung Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Hattie McDaniel, Jesse Owens, Jackie Robinson, MLK Jr., and the Civil Rights Movement until finally the Civil Rights Act of 1964, over 100 years after the Civil War. Is that over? I don't All think, done. I'm not doing the math right on that. Yes. Yes, we absolutely can think. <laughs> it is your fault that you are a douche. That is something we can blame on you. Anyway, he's going to keep being a douche. So, we are finally free at last. In every sense of the term. At least for seven years. In comes the war on drugs. Thanks, President Nixon. So, this brings us to a modern era. Between time of this video's posting and when that was first established, or said, in 1971, the U.S. has used legislation to militarily enforce narcotic trafficking locally and in other countries, such as Colombia and other Latin American countries. So this created the prison industrial complex, which incarcerates U.S. citizens, and um, that rose from... 0.2% of the population to yeah. almost 1%. Dead, Elizabeth. Dead. And Is that brings dead. us to today. The hell did... I see heads. And I see tails. It's all a matter of perspective. Why are you following us? Who sent you? Comstock? What do you want? What do you see here from this angle? Dead. Listen. And that angle? Alive. Walker. Chen Lin. This is becoming rather awkward. Oh, so this has become a uh, quite a gruesome scene. This needs a bit of a nudge. We could spell it out for him, I suppose. The body's gone. It was never here. It's another Columbia. A different Columbia. The same coin. A different perspective. Heads. Tails. Dead. Alive. We have to go through to this other Columbia, but how? It's like riding a bicycle. One never really forgets. One just needs the courage to climb aboard. Alright, so it looks like we're gonna do so. Oh, they're gone. If we go into this tear, I don't think I'll be able to bring us back. Are you sure you're ready? Last call, all aboard on the tear train. So we are going to, I guess it looks like, change time and space completely. Thus, why I was trying to rush through this There's historical no analysis. And no body. It's another world, Walker. Another Columbia. So, Something we can see that the day. Vox Populi have in some way taken power over this small area of Fink Industries. And we have jumped through space and time, it looks like, or at least space. Some kind of interdimensional stuff, magic witchcraft and yep there's all of uh it's like Comstock soldiers I believe that's what that is or at least Fink people locked up I don't think they're Fitzroy people maybe they are maybe they are Vox Populi help us Voxophone Clear up everything for us. To tax the black more than the white, is that not cruel? To forbid the mixing of the races, is that not cruel? Come on. To give the vote to the white man and deny it to the yellow, the black, the red, is that not cruel? But is it not cruel to banish your children from a perfect garden? Or drown your flock under an ocean of water? Cruelty can be instructive. And what is Columbia if not 
the schoolhouse of the Lord. Well, that's probably the most confusing and out of place thing that we've gotten so far. Okay, that was sorry. That one is a very strange foxophone, and was the opposite of help. Change something like that, and have everything else remain the same. Okay, so it looks like Vox Populi now have their own kind of huge propaganda banners and stuff that they're taking over with. Or maybe has been taken over. These men. I killed them. They were dead. Ooh. Is there they're all bleeding. What's wrong with them? They remember. Remember what? what okay, so we're starting to kind of understand the mechanics of what it means to be a space traveler or interdimensional cosmonaut. <laughs> Dimension knot? Uh, anyway, to, to close up this first episode on, on the history of US racism, uh, you have the, the war on drugs, which uh, uses legislation to basically. Um, populate the industrial prison system which incarcerated uh, it started as okay so it started as uh, in 1971 you had about 0.2% of all US citizens were incarcerated about 400,000 people that now has risen to 3 million people and is still rising so it has become profitable to imprison US citizens and that means that cops on the streets have quotas to meet, and if you don't arrest X number of people, then you get punished. At its most basic, if you're if you're of the in the law enforcement, that is what it has come to mean. So it's a very problematic system that has a lot of racial base, and that is basically what we're going to talk about next episode, and how that relates to. Bioshock Infinite, in that it doesn't say anything about that at all. It very much has one way of looking at racism and shows how we, as being of the year 2013, are completely separate from that, and that is a problem. That's, a, that's invisibilization of something that is actually oppressing people right now. So, thank you so much for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time on Rainy Day Let's Play.